All right, so I want to do another video on the sodium potassium pump. And here's a diagram of the sodium potassium pump because it's essential to understand what's going on with the sodium potassium pump, not just for the purpose of neurobiology, but for biology in general. It's an extremely important um, transmembrane protein that has a lot to do with the way our energy stores are used, the potential gradient on, or I should say the potential gradient, I should say the membrane potential, the resting membrane potential for the cells, and also has to do with um, osmosis and maintain and, and making sure that the cell does not burst open from having these differences in concentrate ion concentrations that could lead to the flow of water into the cell. And if the water flows into the cell continuously, it's going to eventually lyse. Okay, but anyway, I, I want to start out by saying that outside the cell. Sodium is really concentrated, okay, there's a high concentration of sodium outside the cell and there's a low concentration of sodium in the cytosol here, all right, and also this inside membrane here, okay, I have these little negative charges drawn in here because inside the cell is negative relative to the outside of the cell, so there's more negative charge inside the cell relative to the outside of the cell and the reason for that is that not only is there there's a lot of negative ions, okay, even ones that people don't talk about. So people mostly talk about chloride, and they say, so, you know, chloride is negatively charging everything here. That is one of the things that's balancing um, the charge difference. But there's nucleic acids and all the nucleic acids. It's like DNA, for instance, has a negative net charge. There's also other organic ions that have carboxyl groups, you know, um, on the end that are negatively charged as well. So there's all kinds of negative ion, organic and inorganic ions inside the cytosol. And that gives it a net negative charge or relative to outside the cell, okay? So really, sodium's gradient, if I'm thinking about its normal gradient, the way it wants to move, it actually wants not to, just for diffusion purposes, we're talking about concentration for diffusion purposes, for simple diffusion, sodium wants to go from high concentration to low concentration. And the same principle is true because sodium is charged, it wants to go in because the positive charge on the sodium ion is attracted to the negative internal charge on the cell. So both the electrical and and um, both the electrical and uh, chemical gradients are both going in the same direction here. Okay, so they both want to flow into the cell. But as you can see here, what we got going on is we're actually flowing out of the cell. So we're performing active transport out of the cell um, using ATP hydrolysis. So we're coupling this process to ATP hydrolysis. Now this is known as an ATPase, and it's a transmembrane protein. Okay. And what's really interesting is how this whole pump works, okay? It's a cycle. Na plus binds to the pump at sites, you know, exposed inside the cell. So I'm inside the cell here. Sodium is going to bind inside the cell, right? And this activates the ATPase, all right? That, this activates this membrane protein, okay? And what ends up happening here is ATP is split or, hy or hydrolyzed to ADP and PI, okay? But... There's an there's another interesting point here, and that is that the phosphate group on the AT, uh, from the ATP actually winds up forming a high energy bond with this ATPA. So what happens really is that there's you know a phosphate on here, okay, attached to this forms a high energy bond. So this is one of the most fo common forms of um, covalent modification is phosphorylation of a protein. Okay, so what we're doing is we're phosphorylating this protein and that induces, literally induces, a um, conformational change. Okay, so the phosphorylation causes the pump to switch its conformation and, you know, through that switching of the conformation, it can release the Na plus to the exterior. Okay, so it can release the Na plus out back outside of the cell over here. Okay, through the conformational change from the phosphorylation. And what ends up happening after that is the um, two K plus ions, okay, or potassium ions, then combine to the receptors over here. Okay, because it's changed conformation now, it's exposed the two extracellular K plus. Um, you know, the extracellular K plus can now bind. Okay, to the um, to to the sites, the specific sites on the ATPase. Okay, and by exposing those sites, it, the K plus binds. Okay, and what ends up happening is we lose this phosphate group. So this phosphate group ends up getting cut off. Okay, 
and that induces another conformational change that reverses this ATPase back to its original conformation when it first bound the Na plus ions. Okay, and as you can see, the net result is three Na pluses and two K plus ions and two uh, potassium ions are being moved. Okay, so that's the whole result. Okay. And the interesting thing about this is that each step of the cycle depends on the other one before it, okay? So if there's any individual step that's disturbed during this process, okay, then the function of the pump will be halted. And that's extremely important because, again, this pump has a lot to do with everything that goes on. So now that I've kind of given a brief introduction, I just have some other things relating to, um, I don't know if we'd be able to read this, it might not be good enough, but I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you. The Na plus K plus pump is essential to maintaining the electrochemical gradient, okay, across the cell membrane, and this is important in the action potential and propagation in muscle and nerve cells, okay, so it has a lot to do with muscle and nerve cells as well. And mind you, I will also say this right now, um, that this pump essentially functions the same way as the calcium pump, okay, there's a calcium pump that works the same way, ATP hydrolysis is, um, is uh, used is coupled to this process to perform active transport. Active transport in the cytosol, the calcium is low concentration outside the cell in the extracellular fluid. The calcium concentration is higher, although the concentrations are much lower than sodium and, in, and potassium in both cases. But anyway, that's just an aside. So the sodium potassium pump requires ATP, and um, they are located throughout the neuron. So they're located in several places throughout the neuron, and it pumps three Na plus ions out, okay, and two K plus ions come in, both against their gradient, okay. And if a channel blocker is applied, you know, to a nerve cell, the Na plus K plus pump would not be able to pump the three Na plus ions and the two K plus ions out, okay, against their potential, against their chemical gradient. And this is probably the biggest misconception that people have in these courses about the sodium potassium pump. Okay, remember I talked about the action potential and I said, you know, we have this, you know, action potential here where it goes through this phase where there's depolarization here, repolarization here. Well, what, what a lot of people like to say is that because these are voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels, that the depolarization phase, okay, where, the, where it increases is due to, like, sodium coming into the cell and the K plus is due to, and, and what, what I'm saying here is that that's a result of the pump, but that's not true, okay? The sodium-potassium pump is not responsible, okay, for any of that of it for any of the process of the action potential directly. Okay, it's responsible for establishing and maintaining a small voltage gradient, which sets the conditions. It sets the conditions for the action potential to occur, but it does not cause repolarization. Okay, because the action potential can occur without it. Okay, it can occur without the sodium potassium pump. And the pump is simply not fast enough to repolarize or depolarize the um you know, to, to, to repolarize or depolarize the cell fast enough to create an action potential. These things are, are occurring in, in milliseconds. I mean, yes, this whole process here, this entire process here is about 10 milliseconds long, but it's still not fast enough, okay? So I just want to clear that up now before we move any further.